I want you guys to take a look at this. This Volkswagen Beetle is partially submerged. The Food and Drug Administration authorized the first at home rapid COVID-19 test. The Bills Bar and Burger on the back side of the Golden Nugget seeing quite a bit of damage here from Hurricane Laura. Take a look. This is what's left saying if its employees and customers are wearing a mask or who's not letting them know who's wearing one and if they're wearing one properly. This big piece of metal we're told by a person who works at the hotel came off of the neighboring hotel and flew all the way over here. Now that neighboring hotel is what we want you all to actually look at. Take a look over at the hotel next door. An Alberta high school teacher placed on leave after an arrest on drug charges. We're weather aware tonight on the Gulf Coast. Let's get straight to meteorologist Caroline Carithers. Caroline, it's been a lightning show out there tonight. Today, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis visited Pensacola announcing seniors will get priority for the COVID-19 vaccine. What do you have to say about this arrest? I'm finna beat it because I ain't killed nobody. So you think they've got the wrong person? In they custody? do. Any idea who might be behind the shooting then? I don't know. I don't know none. Officers say the girl then grabbed a sharp object, stabbing the boy multiple times. He took off running down the street until he collapsed right in front of Howard Elementary School. And that is where paramedics found him. There are a lot of people outside the hospital. And we actually, as I got here just a little while ago, saw another ambulance pull up. You see several gloves like this sitting here on the side of the road. So we asked Mayor Stimson his thoughts. Beads may not be getting thrown off of floats any longer, but you can tell Mardi Gras came through here if you just look up. It's a party on the field tonight. The undefeated Flomanton Hurricanes undefeated. No more. Bayside brought it home this homecoming. Gulf Breeze trying to make a comeback. Ryland McCurdy throws it deep downfield. We never gonna stop. Snap to Brendan Burke. He looks around, finds his man in the end zone. He throws it deep to Christian Bernal. Look at this catch. Toros get a good point after, and the student section goes crazy. The field was electric with the energy after the game. Daphne wins this one with a final score of 21 to 7. Save me a Mountain Dew, because this game was crazy. Flames from this three alarm apartment complex fire on Azalea Road, visible over in West Mobile. Get him! <laughs> Bust the window! WKRG News 5 cutting into programming because of its size. You can see the smoke billowing from this apartment fire. You know, we have Mobile Fire Rescue, they respond to apartment fires all the time, but you don't see the smoke of this magnitude that we are seeing. Walking but Quinn Parrish didn't think twice about running toward smoke. it. He says a higher power put him in the right place at the right time. A lot of people around this area are calling you a hero today. Do you feel like you're a hero? God hero. God use me. God hero. God use me to help that lady so she, 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 he got a calling for her. He got a calling for all of us. He got a calling for me too. Video shows the moments after Parrish pulled the woman from the fire. They got her, they got her. Thank you, Jesus. They got her. She grabbed my hand. I told her to squeeze my hand and make sure she gon' she gonna be all right. She gonna be all right. She squeezed my hand real, real tight. My grandma been gone four years. If that would have been my grandma, I would want somebody to do the same thing. So my heart goes to that. That's somebody grandma. That's somebody mama. <laughs> A couple of days after the fire, Mobile Fire Rescue and the city honored Parrish, along with Ronald Godwin and Demarcus Battles for their heroic efforts. I'm happy we came together as a team, you know, to, to help somebody in need. Brand new French doors, brand new air compressor, brand new pressure washer, Don. Thinking he'd still have to work, James Hamm and his wife, Lisa Dickey, stayed home through the storm. The trees went. And then the fence went. But that was only the beginning. We got out and assessed, and we we're like, okay, we lost the garage. And then the second part come back around, and then that's when it hit us again, and that's when we lo lost the other half of the house. The couple says they went back inside, bracing for the second half of the storm. I looked out, and everything on the front end of the house was gone. Ham and his wife ran and hid in a closet. You couldn't even breathe in there. It was... It was suffocating in underneath the steps, I guess, because of the pressure and everything coming through. 
Even though they're staying with a neighbor and don't think their house is structurally sound, Ham and his wife say they're too nervous to leave. You have looters right now that are going out taking other people's things, and so we have been here. They can't get storage units in. Nobody can come in because of the roads and the damage, and it's understandable, but... Um, we're trying to take care of what we have left. The pair plan on waiting for help to arrive and then rebuilding. <laughs> Dauphin Island's haunted history goes back more than 300 years. Even today you can hear Indian maidens singing at night to the beat of Indian drums. The pulsating beat echoing sounds of the past ring out in one area in particular. There are people who say that in the shell mounds at night on some particular dates you can see white lights emulating from the shell mounds and that could have very, very well been some of the spirits. This old photo of the shell mounds from the Dauphin Island Museum shows what looks like a small white orb in the tree branches. But then there was always the Indian chief. His name was Chief Doublehead, the six-foot red-headed Indian chief that walked the beaches at night, and he left phosphorescent footprints in the sand. And just across the island, there's another popular haunt. Fort Gaines is, is doubly haunted. There, there are stories of soldiers, there are stories of ladies who, who were families of the soldiers. It may look peaceful during the day, but when the sun goes down, there is an unmistakable eerie feeling. During the Civil War, Fort Gaines became central operations for blockade running. In 1864, the fort was involved in the Battle of Mobile Bay between Confederate and Union forces. Later, the fort was used in the Spanish-American War, World War I, and World War II. People have driven by the fort and they have seen one of the one of the females, I don't know whether she would have been a wife or, or uh, a child or what, uh, in a full dress with the big hoop skirts walking the parapets at night. So, do the spirits still roam or is this all just a ghost story? We may never know.